So by now you probably know what the poster, the marketing poster of BPM is. Right? BPM is about trying to achieve business efficiency, trying to achieve business agility, and try to gain some business insight. And that's the promise of BPM at large. It's this whole idea of being able to have some visibility of what's going on, be adaptable to the current situation, and to get some efficiency uh, in there. Now, uh, there's different discussion about whether this is better done with case management and different aspects, but I don't want to go into that. I want to stay at the broadest level of, of trying to achieve those. So another important thing to look when you're starting to do business process management or these kind of endeavors is the difference between a process improvement and process management. Process improvement is project-based. So you do a process improvement, it's a project that you do. You can take many of those projects on, but they're project-based. And it's about the discontinuous improvement that you're trying to do on a specific scoping. Uh, where process management, or business process management, is really about a philosophy, a way of managing, where you change your focus, your point of interest, is now to manage using processes as opposed to manage using the normal functional structure of the organization. Now what's important to realize is that there's a lot of talk about becoming a process-centric organization. So there's two ways of looking at it. You can look at it that we're going to iteratively do a lot of project improvement separately or we're going to try to do a culture change and change the way in which the organization is managed and that will require an actual culture change. If you've been involved in software development or had to pay for software development, you know that identifying a bug or an issue very early in the software development process leads to a very big savings by the end. And it's a factor of uh, at least a thousand. It's the same for business process management. If you can find problems in your model very early on, then you're going to save a lot of headache in your BPM project and in the deployment across. So there's two type of analysis that I want to talk about. One is called structural analysis. And structural analysis is about looking at the structure of your process, how it is built. And from the building as a drawing that I had before, then you can have parallel paths and decision. And you can imagine that in different contexts, you'll do a lot of these decision branching and there can be different events that happen. And that can become quite complex. And the structure of it becomes kind of complex. So you may want to study the structure to make sure that there's no dead end in there, there's no infinite loops in there, uh, there's no uh, starving situation in there. So that's about the actual structure. And then you may want to use another aspect, which is the capacity analysis, is to make sure that not only is the process structurally sound, that it reflects what you wanted to say, but that it will behave the way you expect it to behave. So if you've made some changes to improve the throughput or the speed at which the process gets completed, you may want to go and use capacity analysis to make sure that you actually have achieved those uh, improvements. So here's an example in BPMN where I have an activity, I have an exclusive choice, yes or no, and I have two tasks that follow. And here I have an activity and I have a parallel gateway where these two things will be done in parallel. So now I can run a little simulation on this uh, based on default values and see what happens. Can you start the video please? So, Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll run a, a simple simulation on these two uh, process. I'm going to inject 10,000 instances. Does everybody know what instances are? Instances are the, the actual work that goes through. So if I have a demand, I'll run 10,000. So I'll run 10,000 demands through that, those two little examples here. 
and it's going to tell me uh, how many times each activity uh, gets done in the end. So I've run 10,000, and another assumption that I'm making is that each branch is as likely. So everything is as likely, and I see that I have 5,000, and now I have 4,910, and now I have 10,000, and I have 10,000 there. So what's wrong with my first model? I run it twice, and I got two different set of answers. What's wrong with it? In fact, there's actually nothing wrong with it. Because I've introduced randomness into this. By introducing randomness, even though I ran 10,000, it gives me a good sense of the split, which is 50-50, because there's as likely. But you have to think of a coin toss. Even though a coin toss is 50% chance of getting heads or tails, you can flip it three times and get tails three times. It's the same when you're simulating. So you have to be careful of those things. So the point I'm making there is that when you're looking at results, when you're simulating and doing results like this, you have to make sure that even if the result is not necessarily what you expect, it's a good thing because it's a reason why you're doing simulation is to start questioning, are we obtaining the behavior we want? That was a very simple case where I only have one branch, but you can imagine 400 or even a thousand type of activities going on and then this complexity of all the branches that are taking. So the idea is to find an explanation. Why is it that we end up in that particular state? Uh, what's really a problem is when you cannot explain what's going on. Then usually you have a real problem. It's something that you have to explore. So let me talk very briefly about uh, BPSIM. BPSIM is a standard. It's a new standard that just came out in January. And it was put, put out by the Workflow Management Coalition. And basically it's a way to parametrize uh, business models written in BPMN or in XPDL. XPDL is a different serialization for the same BPMN notation. So it's not really relevant for you here. So the idea was to try to encourage the usage of simulation uh, as an analysis tool uh, when you're doing process analysis and process modeling. Uh, so uh, provide a framework for that and an, an interchange for that. So basically the way it works is with BPSIM is you can define for each of the element of your process, you can define parameters, so provide context for each one of the element from different perspectives. So we divided up the perspective in the time perspective, the control perspective, the resource pers perspective, cost, instant, and priority. So for each element of my little example here, I can say on a time base or a control base or a resource base what is happening there. And I can parametrize this model to reflect uh, the reality or the changes that I want to do and then run this simulation accordingly based on the same model that I had in BPMS. 